Hello nerds! Today we'll be looking at the incredibly niche topic of translating a video game in 1994, specifically the legendary Ted Woolsey's translation of Final Fantasy VI for the Super Nintendo, which he already mistranslated as 3. But let's not start the nitpicking yet. I recently stumbled upon a ROM hack that balances Final Fantasy VI that was translated by one of the most well-known fan translators, Tomato, called Final Fantasy VI T Edition. Having lovingly beaten my USA SNES cartridge of Final Fantasy III, I thought I would notice the difference of translations between Wolsey and Tomato, but I didn't. Then, staring at my SNES nearby, I decided to compare them side by side and Oh goodness, is there a difference. Let me read the original Ted Woolsey intro. Long ago, the War of the Magi reduced the world to a scorched wasteland, and magic simply ceased to exist. One thousand years have passed. Iron, gunpowder, and steam engines have been rediscovered and high technology reigns. But there are some who would enslave the world by reviving the dread destructive force known as magic. This is an intro your eyes kind of glaze over and you think, I get it, there are bad guys and good guys and something to do about technology and magic, and I'm going to play as the good guys. Let's get this started. Let's go. Yet, Tomato's translation reads less like a movie trailer and more like poetry. The Ancient War of the Magi. Pause. These three dots cause you to stop here and ponder what the War of the Magi was, but you can tell it took place before the game starts. And if you've been lucky enough to have played this game before, this line brings up all the memories of the flashback scene later in the game. Sorry, let's continue. When the flames receded, the world was left in ruins, and the power of magic was lost. If you look back at the Woolsey translation, you see how much more clear and emotional the tomato translation is. Let's continue. Over the next 1,000 years, iron, gunpowder, and steam engines took the place of magic as life slowly returned to the land. This makes sense. It's the onward scenario. Magic ceases to exist and technology takes its place. The Woolsey translations butchers this line with the word rediscovered. It makes you think, okay, there was technology, then magic, then oh boy, high technology. It must be so much more powerful than magic because it rains now and there's no magic anymore. And then you get confused as five minutes later you're using magic to destroy technology. Let's continue. Yet there now stands one who had reawakened magic and use its dread power as a means to conquer the world. This is specifically alluding to the main villain, Kefka, and not mass branding everyone who follows him as evil. This immediately adds depth, as we're about to have two of Kefka's soldiers walk on screen and have dialogue about their feelings of this whole scenario. Now, I will admit that the Woolsey translation has that high fantasy feel to it, but Tomato's translation is much more clear and impactful. Let's take a look at our next scene. After viewing the original translation by Woolsey, you interpret the two soldiers on screen as bad guys, manipulating a good guy, but let's break down this next interaction line by line, starting with the new translation first. Wedge, there's the city. Vix, there's the town. City, town, no big deal. Wait, Vix? Like, the vapor rub Vix? First off, these two soldiers are named Biggs and Wedge as a shout out to Star Wars. As every other real release and multiple other games in the series has gotten correct. Secondly, it's Wedge's line, not Biggs, which can be easy to forgive considering both of these characters are perfectly identical and we know Woolsey was put under a time crunch. Third, the Star Wars reference went over Woolsey's head and he was just trying to translate what the name from the Japanese read like. But, like putting a sentence into Google Translator a few too many times, 
when it's translated back into English, it comes out wrong. New translation. Hard to believe an esper's been found frozen there a thousand years after the War of the Magi. Old translation. Hard to believe an esper's been found intact there a thousand years after the War of the Magi. Intact? Intact? So, like, is the esper thing living? Can it run away or attack you with magic? Have you been finding torn apart bodies of these esper things? Besides grammatical choices, these lines are exactly the same, except for one word. And frozen is a much clearer word than intact. Let's go back to the new version. Bah. Probably just another wild goose chase. I don't know. They wouldn't have let us use her unless they were confident that the information was good. Now let's go back to the old translation. Think it's still alive? Probably judging by the urgency of the orders. This text box is a jumble mess. Granted, that's not really Woolsey's fault. One character in Japanese can represent a sound that might take one to four characters in English to make. The 2.14 megabyte cartridge didn't have room for additional text, so Woolsey took this exchange, scrapped it, wrote a different exchange trying to preserve the meaning of the original exchange that the lead on this esper is probably true. Let's go back to the new version. Ah yes, our witch. Old version. And this woman? This sorcerer? Why is she here? This is Woolsey playing catch up as he didn't get to introduce the woman in the last exchange, so he has to do that here and call her a sorcerer. Which is the better word than sorcerer, as it has stronger negative connotation and labels her as someone who performs magic to do evil, where the word sorcery is unclear if the intention is evil or if we're even talking about magic. Back to the new version. I hear she fried 50 of our Magitek armored soldiers in three minutes. Old version. I hear she fried 50 of our Magitek armored soldiers in three minutes. Besides using numbers and less periods to save on characters, this was translated the same, so let's move on. Except BAM! Tomato gets the luxury of adding this originally cut flavor text to the line. Kinda makes your skin crawl, don't it? Now let's cut back to the new translation where Wedge says, Relax. With this thing on her head, she's a mindless puppet. The girl won't even breathe unless we tell her to. Again, Woolsey has to combine these two text boxes into one and says, Not to worry. The slave crown on her head robs her of all conscious thought. She'll follow orders. The words slave crown and robs put such a dark spin on these lines, painting Biggs and Wedge as bad guys. I don't know if I should be upset that Woolsey misses the depth of the writing and strays from it, or impressed that he came up with a creative alternative to simplify text characters while still pulling a strong emotion from the player. Both translators translate the last line identically, then credits roll. Before I broke this introduction down, I myself had a problem with all the re-releases, remasters, and ROM hacks that have been appearing of classic games as of late. I was a purist. I believed that nothing beats the original, nor will it be the same, and to be fair, Woolsey does put a unique spin on the script, but breaking it down like this forced me to realize Tomato's new translation is just much better than the original. Technological limitations, especially of old games, prohibited even basic things from coming out right on the journey over to our shores. Yet, especially for Nintendo, that's what we see. Ports of these classic games, instead of restoring the original assets so that it plays how it's supposed to have been played. This means that the most easily accessible version of a game that the vast majority of people will play is the worst version of that game. I hope, by making this video, that I won't die on YouTube for being such a niche subject for such a micro-sized channel, but that at least someone will see it and say, enough of these straight ports. Let's give these games the respect they deserve 
and touch up the issues that were due solely to its time and remaster them with the love that we have for them. Now, I don't speak Japanese, so I'm missing half the story when I'm interpreting these translations. So, if this is something you enjoy, I recommend two external sources. They're hard to get your hands on, but the Legends of Localization book series provides the most in-depth research on why old video games got translated the way that they did. My second resource is Tim Rogers' series, Let's Mosey, a slow translation of Final Fantasy VII, which he did for Kotaku. I'll put a link of that series here in the video and in the description down below. Now, I don't make videos for views, but if you could confirm that this video didn't die by putting a comment down below, I would appreciate it and allow myself to breathe. Thank you. Love you, bye.